Hello, Kevin Don, Get Fit Guy here. Welcome back. Um, have you ever thought, you know, about how hard it is to come up with something new to say about a topic every week? Man, it's hard. And I believe that this is why there's so many influencers and creators that suffer either from burnout or just doing a complete kind of switcheroo on their claims. So due to the pressure to make new content, one can end up sort of bowing to that pressure rather than sticking to your guns on your message. For me, I often find that I'm compelled to write about things I've seen or read and I think, hmm, that's misinformed. I'll address that on the show. Uh, and this week's a good example of that. So I was looking for a supplement that I use online. And I saw another supplement being recommended to me. This one was for adrenal fatigue. And I had a look at the top review, which said, this supplement is amazing. My primary care provider won't treat me for the things I believe I have. So this supplement's been a life changer for me. And I found this to be quite an interesting review because, well, I certainly don't believe all physicians have the ability to help us as they would like. An example would be a few months back, I wasn't feeling very good. Probably fairly typical in that I don't like to bother the doctor. So I kind of ignored a whole bunch of small, but I think probably related symptoms until I felt like I probably should go to the doctor. When I sat down and I started talking to them, they told me, okay, Mr. Dunn, I have to stop you there. These appointments are limited to a maximum of 10 minutes. So pick one symptom and we'll discuss that. So this isn't really the doctor's choice, right? It's an administrative one because they simply just don't have the time in the day to be able to see all the patients that they have. However, just because they don't have time to listen to all of my problems doesn't mean that their multi-year medical school degree is suddenly less important or less relevant than my ability to Google some symptoms, right? The doctor can't treat you for symptoms that you believe yourself to have. Sadly, this is where supplements come in. They're not regulated by any governing body, and therefore a supplement exists for every imagined ailment that you can have. Without regulation, they make all sorts of claims and are often no better than placebo in terms of efficacy. Which brings me to what this supplement was claiming to cure, which is adrenal fatigue. So let's check in with what adrenal fatigue is and if it could actually be helped by eating the powdered adrenal glands of some cattle. So that's how the body works, right? I mean, if I were to take some bullets, put them in distilled water and shake them around, until the concentrate was two parts per million of bullet and take that as a tincture every day, I'll eventually become bulletproof. Note, this is dry humor. Do not do this. Now, adrenal fatigue is a term that's been floating around in holistic health circles for quite some time. I first came across that term. I was living in Hong Kong, so I'm going to go for it and say... 2012 or 2013. So it's been around for a while, and it's one of those buzzwords that promises an explanation for why so many of us feel tired and stressed and maybe just have that kind of, I don't really feel quite myself kind of sensation. But here's the million dollar question is, according to science, does adrenal fatigue exist? So let's get a grip on what it's supposed to be, right? And it's the concept was popularized by a chiropractor called James Wilson in 1998. And he described it as a condition where chronic stress wears down your adrenal glands, which are small glands located on top of your kidneys. According to this theory, the adrenal glands become unable to produce adequate levels of hormones, which leads to symptoms like fatigue an aching body, disturbed sleep, and digestive problems. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? You get stressed, you get stressed chronically, your adrenal glands burn out, voila, you're now tired all the time. 
And that's where things just get a bit kind of murky, right? Because the science behind adrenal function is, if we're going to understand that this sort of adrenal fatigue thing holds water, we need to take a closer look at how these adrenal glands work. A part of what's called the endocrine system, and they do play a role in producing hormones that regulate metabolism, your immune system, blood pressure, stress response, and so on. The most well-known hormone that they produce is a stress hormone. You've probably heard of it. It's called cortisol. Another buzzword recently, you know, cortisol belly and cortisol reduction and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, when you encounter stress, whether you're running late for an important meeting or running away from a saber-toothed tiger, your body's hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary gland, which then signals the adrenal glands, hey, what's up, give us some cortisol. This process is known as the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Cortisol helps your body to manage stress by increasing blood sugar levels for energy boost, enhancing your brain and cognitive functions and shutting down any non-essential functions. In healthy individuals, once your stressful situation is over, then your cortisol stress levels go back to normal. However, proponents of adrenal fatigue argue that chronic stress keeps the HPA axis activated all the time, which leads to your adrenal glands' inability to keep up with cortisol demand. And this supposed chronic adrenal usage is what they're referring to as adrenal fatigue. So what do experts have to say? By experts, I mean like medical experts, not YouTube experts. And that's where things get contentious. So mainstream medical professionals and institutions, people like the Endocrine Society and the Mayo Clinic, do not recognize adrenal fatigue as a legitimate medical condition. They do acknowledge that the symptoms which people report are very real. But the idea that these symptoms are being caused by adrenal glands burning out due to stress is not supported by evidence. So a major point of contention, though, is a lack of diagnostic criteria because there's no test that can be done to diagnose adrenal fatigue. Blood tests, saliva tests, and urine tests can be done to measure your cortisol levels, and that will indicate if you have adrenal insufficiency, which is a serious condition called Addison's disease. But they don't provide evidence for subtler things, which is where adrenal fatigue comes in. It's important that we differentiate between these things, adrenal insufficiency or Addison's and adrenal fatigue. So the former is a recognized medical condition where the adrenal glands don't produce enough hormones. This can be life-threatening. And it's diagnosed through specific tests which show cortisol levels. Symptoms include severe fatigue, weight loss, low blood pressure, and darkening of your skin. And it does require medical intervention, often involving hormone replacement. But on the other hand, adrenal fatigue is this milder chronic condition, apparently, which doesn't have the hallmark of these severe hormonal deficiencies. Critics argue that this gray area lacks empirical support, and leads people to overlook other causes of their symptoms. So what about the role of chronic stress in all this? While the concept of adrenal fatigue itself is debated, the impact of chronic stress on health is well documented. Chronic stress can lead to health issues like anxiety, depression, digestive problems, heart problems, sleep problems, weight gain, memory problems, concentration problems, sexual problems, these symptoms often overlap with those which are being attributed to adrenal fatigue. Stress affects almost every system of your body. It can alter your immune function, lead to inflammation, disrupt hormones beyond cortisol like insulin and thyroid. While adrenal fatigue as a diagnosis might be controversial, chronic fatigue wreaking havoc on your body is not controversial. Many people who believe they have adrenal fatigue follow lifestyle changes recommended by alternative health practitioners, and then they report that they feel better. These changes often include changes to diet, such as adding in more whole foods, taking regular exercise, practicing better sleep management, 
having stress management techniques like meditation or breathing exercises and sometimes taking some supplements. But here's an idea. Could it be that these and problems here are not necessarily treating adrenal fatigue, but they're promoting better overall health and reducing your stress? The placebo effect, which is where people feel better because they believe that they're being treated for something, obviously can't be ignored. It's real. If someone thinks they have adrenal fatigue, takes steps to address it, then that psychological benefit alone might lead to improvements in health. Moreover, the lifestyle changes recommended for adrenal fatigue are generally ones that would be beneficial to anybody and would alleviate symptoms of many common conditions. Given the overlap between the symptoms of adrenal fatigue and those of other health issues caused by stress, maybe a holistic type approach could be a good thing. So instead of focusing solely on your adrenal glands, though, just look at the bigger picture. How's your health? Do you get enough sleep? Are you eating a good balanced diet with whole foods and fruits and vegetables? Uh, what about healthy fats? Do you exercise regularly? Do you manage stress? Addressing all these aspects can lead to significant improvements in how you feel. And it's also crucial to consult healthcare professionals because you want to rule out other causes for your symptoms like thyroid disorders, anxiety, sleep apnea, other things that can present with similar symptoms and will require different treatments. Research itself continues to explore the impact of stress on health, but there's no consensus that supports adrenal fatigue as a medical condition. Studies often focus on the HPA axis and how it is affected by chronic stress, but the findings don't support the idea that the adrenal glands become fatigued. For instance, a study published by the British Medical Council in their endocrine disorders reviewed many studies and a meta-analysis on the topic included that there's no substantial evidence supporting adrenal fatigue at all. Researchers did point out that while chronic stress does impact the HPA axis, the concept of adrenal fatigue lacks criteria for diagnosis and is not recognized by endocrinologists. But regardless of this debate about whether or not adrenal fatigue exists, if you're constantly tired and stressed, you've been to the doctor and ruled out things like thyroid problems, there are some practical steps you could take to maybe improve your health and well-being. Firstly, get better sleep. Aim for at least seven, if not nine hours of quality sleep per night. Establish a regular sleeping schedule. If you can, please don't send me hatred-filled emails because you're a shift worker and can't get a regular sleep pattern. Sorry, you know, I, this is a general podcast. And I hate that fact that I have to say that every week, but you wouldn't believe the amount of emails I get from people that are like, well, I absolutely object to this because I have this one condition that's absolutely specific to me. So sorry if you work shifts or have other reasons you can't sleep. I sometimes can't sleep because I have a dog that wakes me up very early. But uh, I don't go sending people emails about it. Secondly, balanced diet. Eat a diet which is rich in, you know, eat the rainbow type ideas. Get loads of fruits, vegetables, proteins, whole grains. Avoid excessive amounts of sugar, excessive amounts of caffeine, which can disrupt energy levels throughout the day. Have regular exercise because exercise can obviously improve our health. We know that and it reduces stress. If you're still finding you're overly stressed, maybe look into some breathing exercises. I've used a Wim Hof breathing exercise I found recently on YouTube to see if it makes any difference to my anxiety levels because I was very stressed around university exams. Um, and I will get back to you at some point if I think that it was useful. I'm still playing around with that. Uh, stay hydrated. Lots of water throughout the day helps to support any bodily functions. And of course, go see a professional. Like If you are tired, you need to rule out other things. Uh, so make sure you go and get some proper advice for your symptoms. Does adrenal fatigue exist according to science? Well, the consensus among professionals and researchers is it's not a medical condition. Symptoms attributed to it are real, probably caused by lifestyle choices, chronic stress, or other health conditions. Um, but yeah, focus on your health. Get some better sleep, please. Remember that your health is nuanced and a balanced approach is the most effective. 